Hello, my name is Greg Hatzis, and I'm the head principal of Fairfield Ludlow High School. And I am joined by my colleague, Vanessa Montorsi, who is the director of people services at the school council. Here are some of the topics this video will cover. First, let's review all of the resources that are available to students and parents to help students make the best choices for next year. All of these are available on the Academics tab of our homepage. First, the Program of Studies is your absolute number one resource. It has the most detailed descriptions and specific course information that is available. Next, students this year will be invited to a, an advisory where they will learn all about the course selection process. It is always important to talk with everyone you can, whether it's your teachers or counselors, other students who have taken courses that you're interested in, the administration, and of course, parents and students should be having healthy conversations around what courses students will take next year. We will have a question and answer session live on a Zoom meeting during what we call course selection night. And then you can bring your questions and listen to what other questions people have. Finally, there is a whole host of additional information available on the Academics tab of our website. There's a document that tells you how much time would be expected for your classwork each week outside, depending on what classes you're taking. There is a website with lots of information about all the electives, and there is a whole host of additional information. So please check it out. People often ask, what is the best way to choose courses? Well, the first consideration should be in the short term. What are the graduation requirements that are still left to meet? What are the topics that interest you? What is an appropriate level of rigor? And what other activities do you have in and out of school that may take up your time? And then in the long term, think about, is there a career path you're interested in? It's not necessary, of course, but are there courses or topics that you believe will be informative toward that career path? It's always important to keep your physical health and your social emotional health in mind. And of course, you want a balance of courses that are academically challenging, but also highly engaging, stuff that you're really interested in to keep you engaged. This is a balanced and healthy approach that can set all students up for success, no matter what their futures. We also know that in our community, there is a strong emphasis placed on what happens after high school. We know that this will certainly come into play in this process, but we also want to share with you some lessons that we have seen some students learn. If a student were only to emphasize that they should take courses that they think colleges want them to take, what we have come to see is that there really is no formula for college acceptance. Each school holds different criteria, and even the same schools change those criteria year to year. When students only take courses based on how they think it will influence their GPA, they run the risk of struggling with the rigor of a course that they're not interested in. And so it becomes really hard to engage to the level to get a good grade. Or they may decide not to take a course because they think it will negatively impact their GPA and they miss out on a great learning experience. Sometimes students make choices based on the reputation of a course. What we have also come to learn is that just because one student doesn't necessarily believe a course was good for them, that's not necessarily true for all students. These are great topics to bring up with your school counselor if you would like to discuss them further. What you should keep in mind when picking your courses is to analyze your own strengths and weaknesses, challenge yourself appropriately, take hard courses, especially in areas that you like, but if you overload yourself, that could become a problem. Remember that success is measured by more than just academic performance and what colleges you get into. Being balanced, resilient, and healthy matters a lot in terms of success. Don't forget to take your passions into account. What courses will keep you motivated to learn? And then always consider what the teachers have to say about what challenges that you're gonna be facing and your counselors. They have a wealth of experience to really help you make these decisions. If you're curious about what are the differences between each of the levels, here is a quick summary. College preparatory class or college prep is what most of our students are taking in the majority of our courses. They are high school level rigorous courses that address skills that students need at the appropriate grade level. For students who might need a little bit more challenge, honors levels 
expects more time outside of class. And it's an accelerated pace. And it's a reminder that the expectations are, in fact, above grade level. Advanced placement courses, which are much more time outside of class and a significant volume of independent work, is the equivalent of a freshman college course in a particular major. The reading material is at the college and university level, and it is at a very rapid pace. Now, not only are we helping students master the skills and the content that they need for high school, we are thinking about preparing them for the future. So parents, I just ask you to think about what have been some of the biggest changes to society in the last 25 to 30 years? And if you think about those changes, what skills are students and our children need to address these changes? This is why we can't always use the lens of our own personal experiences in high school to help guide the students. It's a very different world than when we graduated high school. That is why we have developed the vision of the graduate. And as you can see here, these are the things that we hope every child who comes to the Fairfield Public Schools acquires. No matter what enriching content the student, that the teachers put in front of the students, these are the skills we want them to walk away with to be successful no matter what they do after, after high school. This is where elective courses can also be very helpful. And because we have eight periods and a block schedule, we have lots of room for students to be able to take electives. First, what sounds like fun? What skills do you want to learn? What would provide balance to your core courses over the course of your day? What can these courses help show about yourself? Oftentimes when applying to colleges or trying to get jobs, showing the courses that you took really does say a lot. What might help lead to a career path? Reminder, some specific electives are required like physical education and health. And there are elective credits that are required for graduation. So these are the graduation requirements for every student that attends FLHS. As you can see, students need to earn certain credits in certain subject areas. For example, in the area of humanities, students need to earn nine credits. Those credits are distributed to certain class areas. So a student would need to earn four credits in the areas of English, three and a half in the area of social studies, and one and a half credits in additional humanities classes. For STEM, a student needs to earn nine total credits, three credits in the areas of math, three in science, and then three in additional STEM classes. An example of an additional STEM class could be a fourth year math class, as most of our students take four years of math, or a fourth year of a science class. A student will need to earn one credit in phys ed and wellness, and one credit in health and safety classes, one credit in world language, and three credits in other elective areas with a half credit in the arts and vocational areas. Lastly, a student will need to earn one credit in the mastery-based diploma area. Half a credit will come from state test scores earning a proficiency rating in those, such as a PSAT or SAT test, and then a half a credit in academic expectations, which I will discuss in the next slide. So for a total of 25 credits in order to graduate. Most students will earn well and above 25 credits. Students must take six and a half credits per year. So if you multiply 6.5, by four, that's 26 credits anyway. Plus, school counselors will review graduation progress every year during their child's scheduled course selection meeting. Lastly, the back page of the program of studies identifies the buckets in which each of these classes fall into so you as a family can determine what classes fall where. These are the academic expectations that I discussed last slide. Academic expectations are aligned to our vision of a graduate. These are the skills every student must possess for graduation from Fairfield Public Schools. Academic expectations are embedded into every department's curriculum. 
Each class will focus on two of these six academic expectations. For example, Foundations in 2D Art will focus on creating and constructing and exploring and understanding. Another example would be Business Law. That class will focus on synthesizing and evaluating and using media tools. Students' level of proficiency will be tracked throughout each course during their high school career. Parents and guardians can see their students' level of proficiency in Infinite Campus at the end of each term. While the program of studies is still your number one resource, here is a quick breakdown of some of our core areas beginning with mathematics. Mathematics requires three credits to graduate. We expect all students to take the sequence of Algebra 1, Geometry, and Algebra 2. You may be entering high school at a different point in that sequence. From Algebra 2, which is necessary for all students to do well in the SAT, there are three different routes you could take. The calculus route, the statistics route, and the a set of new courses that we're offering called the Applied Mathematics route, and these are the new courses here. Which route you take is probably going to depend on what your post-secondary plans are. It's a good conversation with your counselor. Here are the core ideas in mathematics. You can always pause the video here, or you can always check out the program of studies. In science, three credits are also required. We also expect students to take one credit in life science, one credit in physical science, and one credit in earth or space science. And those are des designated with the L, P, and E next to the names of the courses. In ninth grade, students all take biology. In 10th grade, students can take chemistry, or we have a new offering called environmental chemistry. And they're also able to take a number of electives in the earth, science, space, or physics areas. In 11th and 12th grade, there are a number of options that open up to students, including many of our AP courses, as well as all of the electives in science that we have to offer here at Ludlow High. These are some of the core ideas in science. In English, four years are required for graduation. In 9th and 10th grade, students will take full year courses in English at either the college prep or the honors level. In 11th grade, there is the AP courses of Lang and Comp or American Studies that are offered. And then in 12th grade, a number of electives are available as well as AP Literature. There is also a full year course of 12th grade English. If students opt for the electives, these are the choices. Students are required to pick one from the literature grouping and one from the writing grouping. Each one is a semester course, and you would take two to meet the graduation requirement. Here are some of the core ideas of English from our curriculum. In social studies, three and a half credits are required for graduation, a full year credit in U.S. history and a half credit in civics. Freshman year, students tend to take global studies, Sophomore year, Modern Global Studies, AP Modern European History is available. Junior year is the year they take United States History, and they can also take their half credit in Civics, or they can take that in their senior year. Both junior and senior year, a number of electives are available, including access to AP courses in Social Studies. A new course we're offering this year is the African American, Black, and Puerto Rican Latino Studies course, and that can be taken for college credit. Here are the core ideas in social studies. In world language, only one credit is required for graduation, but most competitive colleges will expect students who have taken at least three years of a language. There's a new course this year in American Sign Language, and students who are coming into high school having taken French or Spanish in the middle schools can continue in those sequences. They can also start a new sequence in Italian, Latin, or Mandarin. Here are the core ideas in world language. The process. Get informed. Read the program of studies and course information posted on the FLHS website. Make sure to speak with your teachers regarding the courses you are thinking about taking next year. Attend the Q&A Google Meet session with your school counselor for more information. And talk to other students 
who have taken other courses you are interested in. Some important dates. January 26th. This is course selection night. Parents and students can preview a video at 6.30 and attend a live Q&A session at 7 p.m. February 1st. During a special advisory, students in grades 9 through 11 will watch a pre-recorded video on the course selection process. After students watch the video, they will meet with their counseling house via Google Meet for a Q&A session. From January 27th through February 4th, teachers will have conversations with their classes about their department course offerings and next level of course work. This is a great opportunity to speak with your teachers about your intentions for next school year. February 8th through 11th, these are signing days. Teachers will sign course selection sheets indicating if they agree or disagree with the course the student is selecting. For example, this particular student selected English Honors. The teacher agreed and placed their initials. But notice for Geometry Honors, the teacher disagreed and recommended regular Geometry College Prep and signed their initials. Regardless if a teacher agrees or disagrees, it does not bear any way as to whether the student can take the class that they selected. This is simply a conversation to have with the student, the school counselor, and the family. February 14th through March 4th. Students will schedule an appointment to meet with their school counselors to finalize their selections in Infinite Campus regarding their schedule for next school year. After meeting with your school counselor, he or she will provide you with a printed copy of your final course verification sheet. This is the sheet that lists all of your course requests. By March 7th, the final course verification sheet is due back to your school counselor. Again, this can be no later than March 7th. And on the sheet, that both the student and parent must sign off indicating they have seen and agreed with the final course verification sheet. Policy and changing and dropping courses. Once schedules are finalized, counselors will make changes for the following reasons only. An incomplete schedule or insufficient credits, a course scheduled an error by the school, changes needed as a result of courses failed, changes needed as a result of summer school work, and changes needed to meet a particular college or post-secondary program entry requirement. As always, students with concerns regarding their academic progress should speak to their teacher and school counselor. Course change requests. We do not allow any course changes. If for some reason there is an outlier situation where a course change request is made, this must be approved by the director and supported by the classroom teacher and school counselor. If the change is approved, a grade of a W or withdrawn is given to courses students do not attend after the first term. Any course dropped in which a student is failing will receive a WF, and both of these, whether it's a W or WF, will appear on the transcript. One important note is that a WF has a zero GPA weighting, so it will affect a student's GPA. Why do we have this policy? In return for providing students with more opportunity and responsibility to build their schedule, we are asking for their commitment to their original course requests because we build the master schedule based off of students' requests. And it keeps our building master schedule intact. It allows us to provide students and teachers with balanced classes, avoiding larger classes, and on the flip side, it's smaller classes. It avoids disruptive domino effect on changes to other courses or teachers. And we build the master schedule from student course requests, including course and teacher counts. So it is important to have reliable numbers when making such decisions. 
Sample schedule. We have a four day schedule rotation. Days one and day three are the same, and days two and day four are the same. A look at an aqua schedule. Aqua students will attend aquaculture periods one and period two, and they will return to the building at approximately 1015. It's important to note that aquaculture students will take all of their science classes at aquaculture and then take their regular core classes with us when they return to our building. We are very excited to have some new courses for next school year. The first course that we have falls under the area of business. It's the business of travel and tourism. One change in the business department is that accounting two is now a half a credit. In the family consumer science de department, next year we will be offering regional American foods. In the area of world language, we have American sign language. In the area of science, we are adding environmental chemistry and environmental chemistry honors. For social studies, we have added the African American, Black and Puerto Rican Latino Studies ECE course or Early College Experience course. This is part of the Sacred Heart University Early College Experience program and students can apply and earn up to three college credits for taking this course. In math, we have three new courses, advanced mathematical decision making. The transition to college mathematics course is developed quantitative statistical and algebraic reasoning and abilities, thus preparing students for college success in multiple mathematics pathways. Last is modern mathematics. It's a rigorous fourth year launch course that differs from the courses that precede it in that the mathematics is focused on discrete topics instead of continuous functions. All these courses and their information can be found in the program of studies for 2022-2023.